start. So hello everyone. Uh, today I will talk about truth and agreement. I will uh, present converting uh, evidence from discourse and etymology to demonstrate and to explain the, relation, the relationship between these two concepts. Unfortunately, due to time constraints, I will have to skip evidence from grammar, although I hope I will be able to mention it at least briefly in my concluding remarks. So, to be a bit more uh, precise, the goal, of this uh, the goal of this talk is to explore the relationship between truth and agreement based on first evidence from discourse. In this part, I will present uh, findings from a corpus-based analysis of the English predicate true. I will then uh, corroborate the findings from this analysis using a cross-linguistic survey of predicate similar to the English predicate two. I will also provide evidence from etymology uh, where I will present various works, mine and others, describing the diachronic path of truth predicates in Semitic languages. Now, based on these uh, various sources of evidence, what I will want to argue is that the relationship between these two concepts, truth and agreement is universally both inherent and mutually inferable. Um, I begin with the uh, evidence from this course. Initial support for the inherent relationship between truth and agreement comes from the use of the natural predicate true. During the 1950s, there were two competing suggestions regarding the dominant use of the predicate true. According to the first suggestion, truth serves a descriptive truth evaluative use. This was the use advocated by John Austin's and many, many correspondence theorists of truth. According to the second suggestion, truth serves a performatory agreement use. This was the use advocated by Peter Strawson following Frank Ramsey. Now, neither Austin nor Strawson saw the competing use as completely irrelevant but they were reluctant to see the to view the competing use as the dominant one because mainly because of the implications it would have for their own concept of truth. Uh, in Oren Ariel, we examined these two competing suggestions and we found that one, two, as in P is true, serves both uses. And we also found that the relevant use is based on the context surrounding P, which we will call here P's discourse profile. So to illustrate uh, these findings, when the predicate truth serves a descriptive truth evaluative use, the speaker predicate in true expresses the fact that the assertion over which true predicates corresponds with some state of affairs. So in this example, the speaker here asserts it's true, she ate all the cookies, uh, which serves to express the fact that there was some state of affairs in which some she ate all the cookies. Now, this disc uh, discourse profile of the assertion of the P over which true predicates under this use tends to be objective and associated with single voice context. What this means is that the relevant assertion concerns an objective fact and is, and, and is barely used as a response to another. Now, when the predicate true serves a performatory intersubjective use, the speaker is not concerned with truth evaluating some state of affairs as either true or false. What he uh, is concerned with is indexing uh, her agreement. So when, uh, in this example, what the speaker wants to do uh, by asserting that's true is to signal her agreement with the other speaker's assertion. Uh, the discourse profile of the assertion over which true predicates under the agreement into subjective use uh, tends to be subjective and involves multiple voices. That is, the relevant assertion concerns a subjective claim and is asserted as a response. Now, to model the use of true in uh, to model the use of the predicate true in interaction, we use the model of Dubois stance triangle. By applying the stance triangle, we were able to explain the fact that there is a mutual pragmatic derivation between the two uses. For, according to the stance triangle, when two speakers uh, evaluate an object in the same way, and this is the two vectors of evaluation, we can infer their alignment. 
And when one of the speakers aligns with the evaluation of another speaker, we can infer her implicit evaluation. This, of course, also applies to predicated true. Only in the case of the predicate true, the object is an assertion. Uh, thus, when true speakers truth evaluate some assertion in the same way, we can infer their agreement. And when one speaker, one of the speakers agrees with the evaluation of another speaker, we can also infer her truth evaluation. Now, since in principle, the stance triangle models interaction regardless of a particular language uh, and regardless of a particular lexeme, a finding with respect to the, predic to the English predicate true should potentially also apply to truth predicates in other languages. Now, by expanding the evidence beyond true and beyond English, we would be able to show the universality of the relationship between truth and agreement. So put, to put it a bit more formally, if indeed the relationship between truth and agreement is universally both inherent and two, mutually inferable, then it will not be limited to the English lexeme true. To pursue this prediction, I will show two things. One, that the dual use uh, for true, the descriptive use and the performatory use in English appears cross-linguistically, and that truth predicates such as true in English have a unique and common etymological path. <clears throat> so to recall, the initial support for the, relationship, for the relationship between truth and agreement came from the fact that the natural predicate truth served a dual use. Therefore, I uh, searched for other truth predicates that collexify these two specific uses. By collexification, I mean that a given language is said to collexify two functionally distinct senses if and only if it can associate them with the same lexical form. The collexified senses I searched for were true in its sense as according to the facts and yes as an affirmative response. Data from the CLIX3, an online database of collexification, shows that there are nine collexification for true and yes in at least eight languages. And, and I say at least because this data doesn't include English true or Hebrews emet, for example. Now, based on the red dots here on the map, you can also see that this collexification is not an aerial phenomenon and that it exists in several parts of the world. Um, I would, would like to extend uh, this data, but for now, uh, these are just the preliminary findings. Okay. Now, one interesting question that arises is how much cross-linguistic evidence is required for collexification to even be considered universal? On the face of it, nine collexification or even 11, if we include Hebrew and English, are not received as strong enough evidence. Uh, what I would like to, to claim is that one, the amount and the distribution of, of the pattern of the collexification for true and yes that we saw on the map uh, in relation to true and yes are sufficient to claim at, at the very least that the relationship between truth and agreement is far from random. And two, I have presented the collexification for true and yes, but there are additional a uh, more productive collexification for true and other agreement markers. For example, for true and right, there are 50 collexification. The reason I chose to present a, the less productive example is because yes is more detached a, from the meaning according to the facts than right, which makes yes a more interesting candidate to demonstrate the relationship between truth and agreement. So with that, I move on to a different kind of evidence, a, evidence from etymology. Now, evidence from etymology is, is the kind of evidence that not only indicates the facts like collexification, but also serves as, as the beginning of an explanation for the relationship between truth and agreement. In this part, I will mainly follow the etymological path of truth predicates in Semitic languages, but I will also hint at the similarity of this path with a, a one more a family of languages. Now, the diachronic path of true in all cups and curly brackets to capture the sense rather than a certain lexeme occurs in a certain way, not, not necessarily the only way. This path can usually be traced to the concrete basic meaning of foundations, stability, and strength, from which 
more abstract meaning develop. Among them is reliability, safety, and truth. And from the sense of truth, a collexified meaning develops that expresses both the adjective true according to the facts and the discourse marker yes, which index agreement. Now, when we see this path like this, it, it is very obvious that from a building or, or a stand or a base, it's hard to think that we, we reach uh, the intersubjective marker yes. Now, uh, this diachronic path described here is compatible uh, with Dragot's intersubjectification mechanism, where over time, objective meanings are recruited to encode the speaker attitude towards some object as well as towards another self. Now, before I demonstrate this path, a brief explanation of the consonantal root system in Semitic language, languages, there very briefly. Now, the lexicon of Semitic languages is created by weaving the consonantal root, usually three consonants, into different patterns belonging to different linguistic categories, such as verbs, nouns, and so on and so forth. Okay, to our first example. Our first example is the consonantal root amen. This root begins its life from a basic meaning of foundations and strength. So in a Syrian, Kemanum is foundations. In biblical Hebrew, we have omna, which is a supporting pillar, uh, a meaning that also serves in modern Hebrew. Emuna is steadiness and strength in biblical Hebrew. These meanings evolved not necessarily, again, in a linear manner into more abstract meanings. So we have emuna, which means faith in biblical Hebrew. A, a man, enemet means truth. Mehiman means trustworthy. Amena means trust in Gez, and in Arabic, amin means safe. Nowadays, um, in modern Hebrew, I didn't write words in Hebrew, uh, we have two intersubjective uh, markers uh, that index agreement, both evolved from the meaning of truth. The first one is a man, which is well known uh, and serves to, uh, ex uh, to index agreement. Now, interestingly, it, it seems that it cannot serve in modern Hebrew the descriptive truth evaluative use. Uh, the second discourse marker, uh, emet, uh, according to the dictionaries, is an adjective. Is an adjective that indicates that the assertion corresponds with the facts. But in natural interaction, we can also find it uh, to serve uh, to index agreement. Another uh, case study, a very similar diachronic path, can also be observed with respect to the consonantal root con. This root too begins its life from a basic meaning of foundations and strength. So in uh, Akkadian, Kanu means was strong. In biblical Hebrew, Kan is a stand, Nahon is steady. In Arabic, Taqwin means a building, and Kan in Kana, uh, in Aramaic, Kan in Kana is based. This meaning too evolved into more abstract meanings. Uh, so we have Nahon, which means truth. In biblical Hebrew, Nahona, which means truthful assertion, and Ken, which means truth. Uh, in Arabic, we have kian, which means reality, which, which some might um, connect with truth. And, for, uh, and this meaning too uh, evolved into more, uh, into the two intersubjective markers in uh, Hebrew. Uh, and we see here as well that undergoing the same uh, diachronic path does not mean the same endpoint. So while ken is much more associated with agreement than with truth nowadays, Nahon is equally associated with both uses. Uh, a look at uh, the Oxford English Dictionary indicates that the development of the English predicature is not so different. Now, although it is emphasized that this is uncertain, there is a suggestion that true is base related to tree, a suggestion that uh, echoes the senses, foundation, and strength that are the source meaning in the development of truth and agreement in Semitic languages. This basic meaning uh, develops to more abstract meanings such as faithful, reliable, and trustworthy, secure in old region, uh, sincere in Middle Dutch, and faithful and safe in Old Icelandic, which eventually develop into the predicate truth that expresses a truth evaluation and index agreement from which we started um, at the beginning uh, evident with our evidence from discourse. So, um, to, to conclude, and um, the, the relationship between truth and agreement here was explored on the basis of uh, three sources. The first one was evidence from discourse. There, I presented the analysis of the English predicate true by Oren Ariel. 
evidence from cross-linguistic patterns to the collexification of true NES, and evidence from etymology, where presented two case studies and that illustrate the common etymological path of truth predicate in Semitic languages. Now, while some of these findings are still preliminary at this point, I hope I have been able to convince that there is a strong relationship between truth and agreement, and one that is universally both inherent and mutually inferable. So yeah, if I have time, I, I will present some future research directions and questions. You do have two minutes. Okay, okay so you can take them. Okay, so uh, some questions that I'm currently thinking about, uh, are true and yes, always interchangeable? Well, the short answer is no. There are cases where replacing true with yes, so I agree and vice versa is inappropriate. Um, I, I, I'm thinking of about three solutions to this problem. Uh, one is of course the discord profile of the relevant P over which true predicates, how strong it is, it probably also has to do with the speaker epistemological state, that is her accessibility to the relevant knowledge. And it could also be related to a suggestion that I read in Marshall 2008 regarding the degree or perhaps the strength of the relevant discourse model. In any case, there is more work to be done before a clear answer can be given because if they are mutual uh, inferable, then it's, it's strange that you can replace them with one another always. Okay, another question is, what grammatical construction might support this analysis? So I promise to uh, address it if I have time. So one of the grammatical construction that can be used as further evidence for the relationship between truth and agreement are concessive construction. According to Koning, 1988, the use of truth markers such as true and indeed in concessive construction serves to emphasize a agreement. We also have it in Umnam, in Hebrew. Um, another question, can mutual inferability also predict a development from agreement markers to truth predicates? Now, this da the data shows that this didn't happen. Also, Dragut's mechanism of change also points to the impossibility, to the one directional uh, diachronic path, but, but then the question is why? Again, because they are mutually inferable. Why, why, is it, uh, in, why is it impossible? Last is the question that I find most interesting. What might be the implications for the relationship between truth and agreement to the relationship between truth and meaning in the sense of truth conditions? Now, in principle, the linguistic use of the predicate true need not necessarily testify to the nature of truth or meaning or truth conditions, but, but I believe that it does. I believe that the complexity we observe with respect to truth stems from its simultaneous relations to objective state of affairs, subjective truth evaluations, and intersubjective acts of agreement. All of these facets are relevant not only to the predicate true, but also to the concept of truth, and therefore also to meaning and to also to truth conditions. Okay. I'll stop sharing. Yeah. And let us see, uh, people. Uh, thank you. I see uh, hands already. Uh, uh, I see Vinicius. You can unmute yourself. I think Michal was first, but I mean, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Um, so. Thank you for this. This is, this is really, really fascinating work. Um, I was wondering, so one thing I wanted to say is maybe a data point. Uh, in Portuguese, both European and, and Brazilian Portuguese, you have the same pattern, right, with uh, the marker, agreement marker truth. Uh, which is also used, right, as agreement marker, um, and it's also, right, the noun, yeah, uh, so, yeah. Um, and then the question that I had was, so do you know what, or like, what, what is the relationship between the usage of these agreement markers and then sort of other response particles, right? So I like guess, no, or things like doch in German, right? So do they have a, what's the relationship in usage, but also in diachrony, uh, like overall in your story, right? Not just in specific languages. Uh, for yes, uh, for from the direction of yes, you mean? Uh, uh, yeah, overall, like so. Do, do you think this is specific something that you can tell about usage that you know can be traced back to diachrony about how what combination people use or in what context people are going to use a response a response particle as opposed to an agreement marker, right? Ah, um, well, I think about that question. Um, 
well, I say yes as a response. I saw it also collexified with other meanings, which is, was also a direction I thought to explore uh, with respect to the directionality of the uh, findings, um, whether it can, if it's not developed from a uh, true and yes, maybe it can come from another direction. Uh, the relationship of, of uh, but so I saw it collectified with if and end and, and other um, senses, but I, I don't know if I have a lot to say about the, the relationship of yes with other responses. Um, there are other questions. Okay, so <laughs> Michal, Michal. Thank you. It was very interesting. Um, so I want to speak to two of your uh, questions that you presented in your last slide. Um, so first about the interchangeability of yes and true. Um, there's a lot of um, writing or discussion uh, coming from CA, Interaction Linguistics Tradition, um, that deals with the differences between these two types of um, responses. Um, and which really differ. So when you do a very meticulous study of uh, when people use this one or the other, um, what people find out and pointed out, and you can look at uh, perhaps um, um, one of the uh, most famous writing about that would be um, Heritage and Raymond, 2005. They talk about um, answering uh, with um, a non-minimal, um, non-yes answer as a more agentive one. So it does something beyond agreement. When you say true, um, it does more than just saying yes. And um, the question is whether you know, agreement is sufficient as a descriptor of the work that um, true as a response token is doing. Um, and Michal, there are two more questions, so be brief, okay? Yes, okay. So uh, one more thing, very briefly, um, when you have um, nachon uh, or true or something like that in a concessive construction, I would think that it projects disagreement rather than strengthens agreement. So um, yeah, this is also- Okay, let's, let's stop here and let uh, Shirley answer. Or you want to hear all uh, there? Are yeah, I just want to make response because I you said that maybe the implications of, of something that you said. So let me just clarify. I don't think the true and yes do the same thing, uh, or the adjective true and the, and the, uh, they they work in different discourse profiles. So true, you will find it more um, as a response to factual claims, and then gradually, okay, I show it in the paper that is under revision. In in certain contexts, the more subjective the context becomes the more you go from truth to agreement. So it's something that is gradient. I, I don't associate them. I, I look for collectification, not because I think they are the same thing, but because it, would, it, would, it was an um, interesting uh, technique to find uh, uh, the association in other languages. So, okay, yeah. Shirley, one, yeah. one last question, I think. Elitzo. Uh, a brief comment and then maybe... Maybe Jack will... will okay. Yeah, so, okay. so one thing is that... It's interesting, Nahon also in Hebrew is used sometimes as true, so actually negative. In Hebrew, it's very odd to say it is false that. We say the lo nachon she. So it's very odd to say it's the sheker she. So the word nachon under negation actually becomes more like a true marker. Uh, nice, nice example. Uh, uh, but but we have I think two minutes. Okay, so more deeply, I, I think I, I, maybe I missed it, but but I'm not sure that I completely understood the difference between like uh, that agreement is, in what sense agreement is not about truth. So when when at what extent when we say I, I agree, it is not about okay I I I agree means I agree that this is true. So, so um, I'm, I'm, I'm missing something, like I, I'm, I'm not sure that I 100% understood the distinction. Well, maybe I will, I will try to answer it by uh, explaining one of the uh, tests that we did to uh, differentiate between the two uses. There are some cases where um, the performatory use is completely irrelevant, and there are some cases where the descriptive use, and I'm saying descriptive to, to like differentiate between true and yes, so it's completely irrelevant. So we started out from uh, trying to find out which of the suggestion was, um, was right. But, and what I want to say is that there are cases you, you, where you can agree with someone without wanting to conform the truth 
of what is said. Can uh, I jump in? Yes. Can you give me that we are far, I mean, we are over our time. So let's... let's so just give me give an example. I think it would be... Okay, you can, you can contact, you can contact her. Okay, please. <laughs> Uh, okay, thanks. We have to move on to the last session and that's the end of this session. Okay, so who takes over? Me, I do. It's okay. a 15 minute break. Ah, so okay, so if there's a break, she can go. Oh, she can go on. So I can explain to you Elitur, a little bit. Okay. So okay. what we're talking about is relative prominence. Oh, Shirley couldn't go into all of this very much. So we're saying <coughs> that you can think of agreement, the subjective agreement and the objective truth predication as two end uh, um, functions. And many times we are here or here or whatever. So I, I, I can make this course prominent by agreeing with you, or I can make this course prominent the fact that I'm asserting P to be true. Okay, some cases are really at the end and therefore it's an either or, okay? So can and you agree you... without thinking that something is true? <laughs> no, um, but you can say nachon aval. You're, no, you're, different... you're, going, you're going the logical way, Elitsu, no, no, okay? No, 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 no. So, wait a minute. Uh, if let, you let me, no, let me clarify what, what, what I'm actually... So I was wondering, no, to be honest, this is not like a... I'm not making sure. So the question is whether, uh, so if, because sometimes it looked to me that the agreement here was basically a response. So when you, the distinction between assertion and agreement is who's first. So if I ask, so that was, I was wondering to what extent this is not a distinction. Suppose you tell me that you're happy. Okay. The, the uh, most of the, uh, things that we agree with, oh, you're having difficulty or whatever. I can agree with that. I have no access to objective facts in this case, okay? So what we're talking about is what is discourse prominent. Now you can go ahead and say, well, if Mira agreed with what I said about, I don't know who, then means she's committed to this truth. Yes, you can do that. But this is, was this my speaker intended goal. So we're saying sometimes the speaker inten main in uh, intention is agreement, alignment with the other person. Sometimes it's the objective. And many times it's like in between one being more prominent, one being less prominent. I think mm -hmm. that in the examples that you mentioned now, it's not so much about agreement, but about affiliation. So it's not, you know, it's true that you cannot agree about someone else's, you know, mental um, state, but you can affiliate. And I don't think that agreement would be at all, you know, salient in this context. Okay. We, we, might, we might think of changing the term. Uh, what no, we but, mean if is if, but if we have choice between two things and it's not about truth, so someone wants to go to Tel Aviv, the other one wants to go to Jerusalem, and we say, okay, I, I want to go to Tel Aviv, then we wouldn't say that the other person, like if I just join you, then it's not agreement, because it's not about truth. Well, I, th I think one... Uh, I'm just... Uh, it's, uh, a, I'm good really example, a good example, it's so a good example of the use of Nahon, uh, would be something like I know it, and in addition to so it's it's not exactly truth, but something like a, a shared knowledge at this point with respect to it. Okay, so nachon aval would be okay. So that's true. Given that, I think that would be the kind of response that people that people. Um, May. If I could uh, jump in, you can you can say about something that didn't happen, okay, a hypothetical or future event that it's true, right? Because well, impossible, yeah. <laughs> so a future event. We've been thinking too much in logical terms. <laughs> a, a, a hypothetical event, a, 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 you can confirm it as true, but but people respond true. So this is the kind of event where you know that 
it, it's not a it's not a correspondence with some state of affairs. It's something else. The, the speaker is doing something else. It is not confirming any event because the event didn't happen. It's about alignment. If I may yeah. add just also one yes, uh, last yeah. question. I think one of the really cool things that, you know, if we actually look at uh, usage interaction is that people tend to combine these things, right? So they say, yes, but actually, or they say, well, not really, right? So there's a bunch of particles and markers being used at the same time. And I think those are also interesting scenarios where we see what possible combinations, what co what combinations are possible mm -hmm. in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Well, my favorite is yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 